In this video, we present the building of a virtual bookcase. We are Marieke Teeuwen and Irene van Rensvoud, researchers at Huygens Institute for the History of the Netherlands and leaders of project NL. When we were preparing our contribution, Marieke came across an episode of the stop motion animation series about handyman Pat and Matt. We thought this episode was a perfect metaphor for what we've been trying to do this past year illustrating the process of trial and error we've been through. So we decided to use clips of the movie in this video. In the Netherlands, we have about 6,000 manuscripts in public collections. These manuscripts are housed in widely different types of institutions, spread all over the country. Some collections are substantial, others hold only one or two manuscripts. Not all collections, moreover, are easy to access. Only a few of them created an online environment, and some are not even easy to reach in real life. The Sint Agatha Monastery in Kuik, for example, has a rich collection of medieval manuscripts that has remained invisible so far. Therefore, we came up with the idea to bring these dispersed manuscripts together in one place, a virtual bookcase, so to speak from which they can be retrieved with ease. Here you can see how the manuscripts are currently spread. They are distributed over about 90 public collections. Only eight collections, however, hold more than 100 manuscripts. The three largest collections, Leiden University Library, the National Library in Den Haag, and Utrecht University Library, together own more than half of the total number of manuscripts. About two thirds of the public collections own fewer than 10 manuscript items. These numbers make it clear that small collections in particular would profit greatly from a central digital structure in which this material can be made accessible with high quality images, standardized descriptive data, and with a single search interface. Hence our plan to build a prototype of such a virtual library. In the conceptualization of our project, we had a number of elements that we thought we could simply repurpose. Existing digital infrastructure of ECODITSA Switzerland with an XML TEI template for the description, model IIIF manifests for the images and a model interface to facilitate searches. Each of these elements, however, did not prove to be easy to copy or reuse. First of all, the model of ECODITA Switzerland is excellent, but it is a system that was built over a period of more than 20 years. This makes it a system which has its peculiarities. Improvements have been made on the go. In a situation where one starts from scratch, it does not make sense to make the very same construction. Secondly, the system devised in Switzerland relies on a hosting that is used to keep up certain digital products and we rely on a hosting that works with different ones. The product that we build must line up with the product that our institute knows and uses if it is to be kept up to date, secure and alive with some kind of stability. Thirdly, new projects have followed in the footsteps of ECODITA Switzerland and have made powerful improvements. It makes sense to incorporate these in our own project. Most importantly, because more and more manuscript collections now have an online presence, the research questions that our field wants to be able to address have changed. Not only the quality of the digital the images themselves have become more important, but also the quality, detail and structure of the metadata. The material that we had lying around for the uh, database is a uh, database with descriptive data of medieval manuscripts in Dutch collections, MMDC. The code used in these files is based on a library cataloging language, Mark 21. For descriptions of manuscripts, a different, richer format has now become standard, described in XML TEI P5. ECODICE Switzerland created a template and Fragmentarium, the Bodleian Library and others improved and refined it. 
The advantage the new format offers is huge. It facilitates an interface in which one can search for the elements of description as defined by the TEI labels, date and place of origin, content, language, material, etc. Hence our decision to try and hammer the old data into a new shape. It's a complicated process that we are right now trying to manage. Existing authority files form a similar case in point. They are there, but they are not particularly stable or in some cases useful for that matter. Ecodice Switzerland reinvented itself several times during its 20 plus years of existence. At first, for example, it offered extra descriptions in PDF format. Now all of the descriptions it contains are labeled in XML TEI. The faceted search developed into a tool which is incredibly flexible. It adopted IIIF at a very early stage. It showed how these standards are drivers for stable and interoperable data. If we build a new e codages for the Netherlands, we must not only copy their architecture, but also their flexibility to change, adapt, and accommodate new developments. Now, because we want to create a flexible environment that not only reflects our personal research interests and priorities, but is open to the interests of others, we work together with different partners, with art historians, bookbinders, conservators, students, and of course, curators of special collections. We've come to realize that merely entering in conversation with them or sending them questionnaires with questions that reflect our goals and interests does not necessarily lead to a better understanding of what potential users of a national manuscript portal need. We therefore started pilot projects to find out in close cooperation with these different partners what an ideal virtual bookcase should look like. We could, for example, take directions from our Flemish colleagues in the partner project Medieval Manuscripts in Flemish Collections. They created a system to filter more rigorously on script type or illumination, just as art historians involved in the Bijvang project. Working with the art historians resulted in a push to develop a new part in the description template that will house more or more differentiated data for elimination in manuscripts. To give another example, in Tresor, the Center for Frisian History and Literature, we work together with a research group, Pastei, which consists of a bookbinder, a linguist, and an archivist, all of them specialists of Frisian book culture. They provide us with data about bindings that are so detailed that it has become necessary to customize our description template to house their rich descriptions. One of the wishes that the members of the group have brought forward is to have the Frisian language as one of the main languages of a national manuscript portal. And why not? So where did our engagement in this project get us? How did it change our thinking about the endeavor as a whole? Let's first state the obvious. In the movie, Pet and Matt sell books to buy tools. We do not suggest to sell manuscripts for digital tools. But our point is building a digital library equals building a structure that is capable of constant change. Standards shift, code is always in motion and in need of updates. Metadata are an open-ended kind of information. What we should be building is thus not a fitting structure for existing data, but rather a model in which these digital objects can thrive, an ecosystem where they can be observed and researched. What would be really cool is if we could stand on the shoulders of previous architects, such as Christoph Fleurler, and take their foundations to a next level to where new developments in digital humanities have brought us. In a future library, we could perhaps focus on accommodating new research by incorporating tools that allow a researcher to approach aggregated collections with new questions. A pattern seeker, for example, uh, based on the same technological principle as Google's phrase recognition, 
could facilitate searching for rabbits or snails in the margins or illuminations with gold. Artificial intelligence could help us grade the likeness of script so that we could research for so that we could search for individual hands or date script by using its similarity to other samples. Handwritten text recognition could help us read the content. Visualizations such as graphs and maps could help us see patterns in the metadata that now remain hidden. We could also think of tools that not only bring the digital object closer to the researcher, but also to different audiences. Medieval books narrate stories that speak to people interested in the art of calligraphy, illuminating, bookbinding, personalizing text, etc. It would be great if we could build more bridges between digital objects and collection holding institutions who may want to update information or create exhibitions or curate local history. Artists who may want to seek inspiration, study techniques or reinterpret. Or software developers who may want to develop digital tools to dig into the material. Thus, our idea about the future of the digital manuscript library is to build an infrastructure in which, of course, the digital objects and their metadata thrive and are well connected to their kin specimens that exist in other digital collections. But we would also like to kit it out with instruments that stimulate other kinds of explorations. Perhaps the term virtual manuscript workshop or lab would be better suited so that the digital objects can be taken out to play with by all kinds of audiences. I don't.